Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and baby. Welcome to American Hospital uh, Ancineta class, uh, the virtual session. Now this is episode three. We talk about the labor. We talk about the complication that correlates labor. So emergency session, instrumental deliveries, and uh, we finish the session until you will have your baby in your arms. So again with you is Wendy, that I am a midwife, lactation consultant, baby instructor massage and uh, mental first aider. And with me is my colleague Susie. Hello, I'm Susie. I'm the clinical coordinator for labour and delivery. So today, as Wendy said, we're going to discuss labour. Okay, so labour, what is labour? So we separate labour into three stages. We have the first stage of labour, we have the second stage of labour and the third stage. So what are these stages? So the first stage of labour is um, we have a latent phase which is from zero dilatation up until four centimeters um, at this stage of labor this is where the cervix is moving from a posterior position to a central the cervix is becoming soft and it's shortening and it's starting to dilate what's also happening at this stage the baby's head is starting to descend into the pelvis so what happens in the latent stage and how can you manage the latent stage of labor so if you are at home the key is uh, basically to try to relax uh, try to don't think about that okay if you keep uh, thinking about oh my god maybe labor stable 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 the labor will not go we not start it as well so basically when you're at home and you got this kind of regular contraction as we mentioned in episode two try to get your head rid of that so try to do some activity that you will like it can be dancing with your partner why not or you can be go for a swim or you can go for a walk maybe try to avoid to go for a walk in dubai more otherwise the first contraction that you got it will have like 300 people from security asking you if you want to go to the hospital but if you can just go down from your building from your area from your compound with, with your husband or with your friends and try to get some movement it's better Oh, you can basically try to cook. I got a friend of mine, she was cooking something for uh, delivery itself. I had uh, another friend of mine that she was on the ironing, okay, to try to don't think about that. But the main thing is try to don't think, try to cope, try to breathe, and uh, try to don't stress you so much. If the labor will start, the contraction will get more regular, every two to three minutes with the same intensity and the same strength. And again, as we explained to you before, if you really cannot cope, try to have some Panadol if you don't have an allergy or any other medical condition. And then you will see the contraction will start to get more regular, more regular, more regular, until what's happened? Until your survey became very soft, very short, and until basically you will reach like four centimeter dilatation. Of course, if you are at home and you got and you get scared about this contraction, even they are regular, or you feel that there is something that doesn't feel you safe, always welcome to come to the hospital before okay we don't want to we don't stop you in the entrance how long you got contracting how many times how many minutes are they irregular so we always welcome you and they'll be checking and assure you if you got any doubts but when the contraction became regular what's happened susie you are where on the active phase of labor so we know the active phase of labor is from four centimeters up until 10 centimeters which is that golden number everyone is trying to achieve during this time, the contractions are coming more intense, they're lasting longer, you're finding that you're having to use all your coping me methods to breathe through the contractions, using your husband to lean on him. At this stage as well, the cervix is dilating. What, what we say, rule of thumb, one centimetre every hour, thereabouts. There's always somebody that's going to go faster or slower, it just depends. Baby makes a plan, the baby doesn't share that plan with us. So that's why we examine every four hours to check the progress. During this time, the baby's head is coming into the pelvis. As Wendy said earlier on in the first episode, we talk about fifths palpable. This is where the baby is descending into the pelvis. During this time, again, your waters may open, as we said earlier. What opening of the water it can happen spontaneously. Um, that mucusy show that we discussed earlier on is getting heavier. You might even start to feel pressure. You might even feel nausea. So how do you cope with the contractions, Wendy, when they're coming very frequently, the intensity is increasing, what's happening? Oh, that's a nice, crazy question. I want to show one thing so just for you to understand better the contraction, okay? So, when you come to the hospital, I'm sitting here on a nice birth stool, okay? When you come to the hospital, the midwife will do like a kind of trace, it's called CTG. CTG is like a machine that will attach on your tummy and we'll just see the heart rate of your baby and we see how often you got contraction okay remember that the ctg machine is only a machine we are a midwife so to check for your contraction we always palpate your tummy 
and do yes to you as well, how it works. But why I'm showing you that? Because I want you to keep in mind how the contraction looks like. The contraction start, okay, they go up, 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 until they reach the maximum peak and after they go down. They come up and they go down. They look exactly like a wave, okay? Remember that contraction are your friends, are not your enemy, because the contraction are the ones that really keep the baby close to you, okay? The more contraction you got, the quicker the baby will come to you. There are two different ways to cope with the contraction. One way is the adrenaline response and the other one is the oxytocin endorphin response. Remember the wave. Adrenaline response is when basically you're doing like that. Oh my God. Let's finish. What are you doing this way? In this way, what happened? You're closing your body, you're closing your pelvis. In your baby that is pushing down during contraction to come down, it offer all the resistance from your bones and from your pelvis as well. So you don't feel double the pain, you feel even triple the pain. Because stuff that is pushing down, it got all your resistance to do like that. And also, you don't breathe. When you don't breathe, your body will not have oxygen and we got to what is called like adrenaline response. Adrenaline response is when you're totally scared about that and actually if you got too much adrenaline at the beginning, you can even stop the labor itself, okay? And the labor can get longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. You need to achieve what? The oxytocin endorphin response. The adrenaline is like the nice wave that come to the beach, but instead of meeting the sandy beach, you meet a car and you will do like that on the cliff and you can even hear the noise. We don't want that. We want you to be relaxed because the more you relax, the more oxytocin, that is the hormone of love and the hormone also that regulates the contraction, will flow in your body and the quicker labor you will have. And also, the more you relax, the more between contraction, you got a kind of break and your body will release endorphin. That is the natural uh, morphine that your body basically will release. So how you do that? I want you, when you got the contraction, to focus on breathing because breathing is the only thing that really helps you. So when you focus on breathing, you know there is like 1,000 ways to breathe and uh, if you do yoga especially, it's mean that you are very aware about that. But the thing that I want you to know is the breathing with the tummy. So what I want to do, I want you to concentrate on the contraction, to feel when the contraction starts, try to open your pelvis a little bit, try to move a little bit and try to inhale. And when you inhale, I want you to visualize that you put all your hair on your tummy. So you inhale, and now when you exhale, I want you to think about your tummy as a balloon, that we inflate and deflate. The more contraction they get stronger, the more hair you will do. Try to do this couple of breathing exercise in the evening. You can even, can you be my husband, Susie? I can. Okay. You can even hug your husband, okay? And try to do this kind of breathing. And go squatting. Well done, you're doing fabulous. Keep breathing. Good girl. It will help a lot to open the pelvis, to relax, and also to improve your oxygenation during the contraction. There is another thing that you might want to do, and sometimes now during labor you want to shout, to shout and something, because you know labor can be scary, it can be scary for a lot of things. Come on, during labor you became a mother, right? There is no way to come up, to come out and to say, okay, I quit, I will come tomorrow and we will go another day. I've had enough, and tired. Be like, and sometimes you need to be grounded again, and you can be, uh, you need to be like, um, okay, I need to lose control for one minute, and I need to catch all the control, and you need to shout. But there is a way to shout in labor that will help also to open the cervix. If you do this kind of ah things, will not help at all. Because you remember in episode one, if you got contract here, you're contracting down and you want you to be contracted. You need to relax. So there is another thing called vocalization. So basically, you are with your husband, you take your hair again, and this time, in order to exhale, you do ah. Until you finish all your hair. You can do ah, you can do hey, yo. The only thing that you cannot do is ooh. First, because it doesn't sound nice to enter in delivery, you need to say ooh, look what is this. But also because ooh is the, the let's say, the vocal for the nirvana, for the closing. We yeah. want to open it, Everything we want closes. the baby to come out. So that's the way you can cope. 
one year labor, we, if you got a low risk without any problem, we want you to mobilize as much as you can, to do squatting, to move with your husband, and to be in bed as less as possible yeah. because the gravity will help the baby to come down. In labor unit here in the medical hospital, we got a ball, we got everything you need basically to move and to mobilize. And even if you need a CTG monitor, the cable for the CTG is very long and they can mobilize also. And we got the Wi Fi in every room. So basically, you can go uh, with your monitor wireless for 30 minutes around and you can really achieve like a natural ball like that. Okay. In case you need to be in bed, we'll discuss later what kind of instrument can give to you just to achieve like a normal movement and uh, you know, everything's yeah. good. And you can use your husband's as well because quite often in labor you get backache and pressure. So can you turn around? Yeah. So we can get your, as you're leaning over and you're deep breathing, we can rub your back. Okay, so you can get your husbands to do this. They can massage the bottom of your back to try and relax the muscles. Because you remember, baby's pushing down and all these muscles and ligaments are tight and stretching. So we want them to relax. So you can use heat. Heat packs work amazingly well, as well as massage to try and just release that energy in the, the lower back. You can even bring a tennis ball in yeah. the hospital if you want. Because obviously with your tennis ball you can rub in the areas where you're feeling the contractions and the pain. And this will just help to relax this area. And that's basically how you survive uh, during the second stage of labor. In the next class, uh, with next episode, we'll talk about pain relief. So yeah. for now, we we'll talk about the only how the things are uh, happening. The only thing I want to mention that during this phase is also when sometimes the baby can go through what we call fetal distress. Mm. So for example, when we ascultate the heart rate of the baby, the baby may be heart rate doesn't go so well or maybe there is some complication that the labor can occur and we need to go for emergency second session. Emergency session and elective session are quite similar. The only difference between is that elective session you know already the dates that you come to the hospital and uh, you're not going to be a meeting delivery unit but you're going to be a meet like where in postnatal unit because you come from there directly to our operation theater. And uh, emergency session that you are already in delivery unit, you are in labor, and something happened that you might, you might need to go for operation. Uh, the good thing that you need to be aware that on the fourth floor is where everything is concentrated in American hospital. So we will have uh, like a labor unit with uh, including operation theater, including an SEU, all the same level and very close. So even in case of an emergency, I don't want you to figure yourself running on a bed with the midwives and all the way to the hospital. And I think it's quite reassuring to know that everything is here. Yeah. The good things about cesarean session that the husband can come inside with you. Okay, so for a man, uh, if you want to go for session, it's not like a reason to go down for a cigarette of coffee. You need to be with your wife as well. We put a scrub on you and you can enter. Yeah. Remember that uh, in operation theater, you cannot uh, do any video as a policy of our hospital, but you can do a picture of the baby later on. Okay, so you can have some memories about the baby as well. Both for elective and emergency case, we prefer to go for spine anesthesia because spinal anesthesia basically it keeps you awake and you can have a good memory of the delivery. You can remember when the baby come out, you can remember when the baby come to you yourself. And uh, we do general anesthesia only very rarely, I think once or two in a year, right, Susie, not more. No. Only if really there is like a very, very emergency kind of uh, life emergency as well. Okay. Regarding the recovery after the second session, it's more or less the same. Remember that nowadays they don't cut any single layer, they cut only the skin and after they divaricate the muscle and they cut only the uterus. So basically you got two major cuts as well, which is mean that uh, after the first, uh, during the first day, as uh, if you got a second session in the morning, during the evening, the midwives, how bad we are. We have you up and immobilizing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we come, come to your room and they say, come on, stand up and walk around because really we left the healing things. Uh, and uh, maybe the first day you feel like a bit, oh, I'm feeling really tired and pain, but after the recovery, been very quick and very speed up. And remember that uh, a cesarean session is not the end of the world. No. Uh, we call cesarean session belly birth, it's also with the same. And the things that after cesarean session, it doesn't mean that you will have a session in your life, but you can even achieve for a normal birth during the next pregnancy. So if it's happened to you, feel free always to discuss with the midwife and to your doctor regarding your concern or your feelings after that, because it's very important to understand also the reason for session and also to understand your feelings after session. Mm -hmm. If you want to talk, we are here for you anytime, okay? And as, midwife. as long as we have a healthy mummy and healthy baby at the end, that's our priority. So again, we will always do our best. We're midwives. Yeah.
yeah. this is what we do we do vaginal birth so we will do our best to try and prevent a cesarean section but sometimes we know they are unavoidable and mm -hmm. um, we cannot you know sometimes as I said earlier baby makes a plan and doesn't share that plan with us and sometimes yes we do need to do cesarean sections um, and sometimes we need to do instrumental deliveries yes, so this is another way to avoid a c-section okay so sometimes we're monitoring baby baby show signs of fetal distress which is the heart rate as Wendy said starts to go down and you're 10 centimeters you're pushing and we think we could, we're going to get baby vaginally so we can offer other methods so we do um, instrumental we do um, we call it a kiwi which is a vacuum okay which Wendy's showing here which goes on top of the baby's head yeah. um, the doctor increases the pressure and as you're pushing your doctor is gently guiding the baby out usually why the second contraction baby's head is delivered okay so Wendy's just going to demonstrate where the cup would sit he's putting the cup here and after it's not that the doctor will push the baby out. You see, need to do you have to work. push. You have to push, and the doctor basically just guides the baby out. Just give a little bit more of energy, okay, to use the key with delivery. And that is you sometimes when the baby is very low, almost time for delivery, but for any reason the heart rate of the baby doesn't work so well. So we need to accelerate and expedite the delivery. And uh, what else we can use, Susie? We do have forceps now that. They look scary, but they're not, and they work in the same way. Basically, they are like spoons. So they cup around the baby's head, and then the mum has to push, okay? So again, and the forceps, the forceps go on, okay? Can you, Wendy, can you give me a push? Yes. And we gently guide the baby out, okay? Again, this is another way to avoid emergency cesarean section, and this decision will be made by your obstetrician depending on the circumstances regarding your labour, the baby's heart rate, and obviously if you're fully dilated. If you were six centimetres, seven centimetres, and the obstetrician is not happy with the CTG or the, the trace, then obviously that's when the decision is made for C-section. But we will avoid at all costs if we can, because again, we want normal births. Normal birth is obviously the... It is. Yeah. <laughs> But the things, one, one thing only regarding instrumental delivery that uh, most of the parents are concerned about the shape of the baby head. Mm -hmm. So uh, already you know that you know that the skull of the baby is not firm, okay, uh, at the birth. Basically soft because when it passes through the birth channel, it needs to basically be modified to come out from uh, all the space that is quite narrow, okay. If, uh, in case the baby got a key with delivery, for example, so we apply a cap here, it's very common for the baby to have uh, like a long skull when they come out or sometimes what we call a kiwi mark so it's like uh, something such a mark here. it's mark a kiwi yeah so don't get scared about that okay it takes about one day 24 hours to get this normal okay you can start you can, you can look like oh my god it sounds so strange so ugly i might be afraid to touch the baby like that but don't worry it's totally normal and between 24 hours yeah. maybe two days it's totally gone and the baby we got again again like a round shape of the head same thing can happen with the forcep mm -hmm. The force is applied here in this area, so sometimes can baby can born with like a kind of force of marks, okay? Again, it's like a pressure mark, isn't pressure it? Pressure marks, yeah. Like, and uh, it can be scary for the parents, especially for the same parent, but after it's totally normal and it totally will go, okay? And then uh, Susie, just think about uh, I'm doing all my stuff in labor, I'm doing good, uh, and baby is doing great, uh, and I'm feeling pushing. What's happened during the pushing style? What is called second? So we know it's called second stage. Oh, okay. So that's when your cervix gets to 10 centimeters dilated. So this is where you start to feel a lot of pressure. You usually feel it in your bottom, okay, the pressure. And this is where ladies, if they don't have any analgesia like an epidural, they will have this urge to bear down, uh, okay? So during this stage, baby, as the contraction pushes from the top, baby pushes down and baby has to do a rotation to get through the pelvis because it's not easy to get through. They're very clever, our babies. So baby, baby pushes down and baby starts to rotate to put the shoulders under the pubic bone. And as you start to push, baby starts to... Give us a big push, Wendy. Okay. So the head delivers and restitutes. Okay, so that's where baby's having a rest. The head is delivered, waiting for the next contraction, which will deliver the body. Okay. I can feel a contraction coming. Can you give me a push? Okay. And then baby's shoulder slips under. 
come up and we put baby directly skin to skin with mummy. Okay, here as well at American Hospital we are promoting delayed cord clamping. So this helps again with giving all the nutrients from the placenta to the baby. We wait between one to two minutes, okay. We dry baby with a warm towel, baby's having skin to skin with mummy. We like to see if our daddies will like to cut the cord because this is a really memorable moment for them. This is the, could be their first baby, so this is something that we really want to get them. Sometimes they're like, mm, absolutely not, but you know, we do try to offer. Once we feel the, port, the pulse um, of the cord start pulsating, then we can cut and clamp the cord and baby separated from the placenta. Okay, so that takes us to the third stage of labour. So what is the third stage of labour, Wendy? The third stage of labour is basically when the baby furniture are coming out from the uterus, so which is something like the placenta, the membranes and everything. And uh, usually to basically help you to have this one, the doctor will prescribe for you some kind of medication called uterotonic, it's uh, is depending on your doctor, it's something that can be given IV or AN, and it will basically help the uterus to contract, okay, and to the placenta to come out quickly. The reason that we want you to avoid to have like a PPH that is hemorrhage after birth. One very important thing for us to know regarding the, uh, the delivery of the baby, if uh, you are happy to do the lacro clamping, which is what we, pr uh, we promote in American hospital. The lacro clamping is basically when the baby and the cord they are together at least for three minutes, because all the blood in the placenta and the cord is baby blood. So they did a lot of study, and if you want to have a look, also you can look for online for that. That they say that the, the lacro clamping is. Um, is giving to the baby a lot of iron and a lot of supply and when the baby's got one year older they got less problem of uh, iron deficiency anemia okay and for us uh, usually we do for everyone and even for pretend baby we try to milk some blood to the baby as well but in case you need to go for uh, stem cell collection which is your totally choice if you want and uh, we can do private stem cell collection i think we got only two companies allow in american hospitals so if you want to know better about that just uh, call us or email us and we can uh, offer some information about that but remember that if you want to do stem cell collection you need to tell her in advance because if you want to do stem cell collection we cannot wait like about uh, three minutes to no. the baby to come out otherwise there will be no blood at all anymore okay so that's important for us and then when we're waiting for the placenta to come out and for the baby to come out what's happened you got your baby here something very magical happened mm. the baby come out it takes the first breath and there's a moment when you get in love with your baby and uh, that's the moment when you will be the happiest woman in the world and you forget whatever it was be before the moment that you watch your baby for the first time and the moment that uh, finally you realize that you're a mom you're not a daughter anymore, you're not a wife anymore, you're not only a woman anymore. You are more, you're more than that. You're also a mother. And it's the most amazing thing for labor. So remember, every contraction is every step closer to become to this moment. And this moment, the skin to skin contact for us is very important mm. because what's happened to, to you? Think about the baby. The baby got a lot of true modification. In the uterus, think about that the lungs were full of uh, fluid. There is no hair. When the baby come out and you got the first breath for the baby, the baby lungs suddenly remove all the, all the fluid and they remove and it takes all the hair. So it's like uh, huge things. The blood circulation is changed mm. a lot because in the uterus, the baby blood, the baby artery was carrying like the dirty and the vein, uh, they call it the, the clean blood. When they come out, the circulation changed completely. So we got like basically the artery with the clean blood and the vein with the dirty blood. It's a massive thing. And the baby can be distressed a little mm. bit of what's happening. Well, they must wonder yeah. what's just happened. They've been I in this know. nice, warm, dark environment and all of a sudden they feel gravity for the first time because they've never been exposed to that. It's bright, mm -hmm. it's cold because they're born wet because they're born, they've been in a sack of fluid. A lot of our babies here have lots of hair, so they must think, what on earth has just happened? And they have just gone through labour. So we so put them straight onto mummy and what happens then? And with mommy, basically they regulate the respiratory rate and the heart rate for the baby, which is very important to start the, this breathing mm. in a nice way. And also, 
only the, by putting the baby here, this area of our body will increase the temperature about 2 degrees. So only putting the baby here will warm up your baby. That's why we want to do skin to skin with your baby, no skin and the, uh, on pyjama gowns. We want to prefer skin to skin, okay? Because really we like the baby to regulate the heart rate, regulate the temperature, and regulate and coming down. And also there is the first colonization bacteria. From mama bacteria, the good bacteria from the skin to the baby. So baby became part of your family. And uh, really, the start of a family is from here. We also recommend to daddies to do skin to skin with your baby, mm -hmm. okay? It will be a special moment that will never come back. And it will be good for your baby as well to get familiar. Yeah. When you can do skin to skin with your baby? For example, if your wife needs some stitches, because after delivery, while well, after the placenta come out, we need to check if you need some stitches from down. And maybe when the doctor will provide for you, you know, we, uh, you can take the baby, you can do some skin to skin with your baby as well. Regarding the stitches, remember that here in the American hospital we don't do uh, episiotomy for every lady. Mm. We do episiotomy only if it's needed, and it's needed in case, for example, instrumental delivery or in case we need to expectate the bird because there is some problem at the end for regarding the heart rate. Or we do for like a particular condition when your perineum is very shorter and you got like problem that you might lacerate until the anus. But uh, this kind of things they can be seen only during the delivery mm. time. And of course, before instrumental delivery, before cesarean session, before episiotomy, before everything, okay, we always ask to you, we always take yeah. the consent for you. There is no doctor holding the scissor in the pocket and just cutting perineum like no. that. We always explain what we're going to do thoroughly and why we have to do it and I say we don't do it routinely. Some places worldwide they do routine episiotomies but it's something that we don't do here yeah, and we again prefer natural, we prefer natural. Natural here because they are quicker to heal and less painful as well. So. After delivery, you got the third stage that the placenta come out, we check in for stitches, we check in for your blood loss, and you will stay in delivery only for us for about two hours. Yeah. In these two hours, we will help you to achieve also the breastfeeding, because the first hour after delivery is called the golden hour, mm -hmm. and uh, we try to help you to manage to latch the baby as uh, soon as possible. So in this way, you can promote the start initiation breastfeeding. In case your baby needs to go to an SCU, an SCU the natal intensive care unit for anything, and uh, maybe born a little bit preterm, maybe there was some complication at birth, we want to start hand expression of you or milk during the first hour of birth, just to help you to achieve milk as well, okay? And uh, just to also to help you in the future, if you want to also go for breastfeeding for the baby, even the baby got some complication, yeah. it's very, very important. And uh, if the baby stay with you, what's up in the delivery unit? We check the weight of the baby, yeah. we check uh, the, how long is the baby, Remember that pediatrician will not come at birth. It will come only after 24 hours to see the baby at the unit. Only uh, come at birth if there is any complication. There is a midwife, me, Susie, or one of our yeah. colleagues to check your baby as well, okay? And uh, if we've got any problem, we focus with your pediatrician that is here and you can come to see the baby. After that, we give an injection to the baby that is called vitamin K. It's to avoid hemorrhoid, hemorrhoid disease on the baby. And uh, usually we can give uh, on the tight, if you prefer, you can give it orally. And uh, some parents that don't want to give uh, for any kind of reason, you do your research, but our recommendation is, is to, to, take, give, it, is to yeah. take it, it's better. At least the baby can prevent any kind of particular hemorrhage or problem later on during the first week of life of the baby. And uh, after that, we leave you alone. We give something to drink and drink, uh, eat and drink, which is very important. Yes. Some toast, something like that. And after two hours, you have this time. You can go to the postnatal ward, where uh, one nurse will assist you for breastfeeding, for uh, washing the baby, and she will do like a kind of uh, real uh, on live, uh, on live, uh, say, antenatal class yeah. because she will come to your room and she will explain everything to you one by one. Bath demonstration yeah. because it might be your first baby. You've never bathed the baby, so this is stuff that you you need to know. Changing the diaper, you know, if you've never had young children in your family. Yeah. How do you know how to change a diaper? How do you know when baby's hungry? This is all the stuff that we teach you postnatally as well. Yeah. yeah. And that's all, guys, for that. I will leave you in the delivery unit with your baby, remember. Wait for the skin-to-skin -skin contact and the first sign of love for your baby. All the best, guys. Take See care. Bye-bye.